With favor, God comes me, comes us us with a shield. God's favor is upon our life. We cannot be defeated. God is with us and God is for us. Our Heavenly Father honors us because we serve Jesus. God highly regards us and highly respects us. God's favor compasses us about as a shield. New doors of opportunity open to us every day. God's favor, and you can singularize this if you want. You can say, God's favor in my life causes me to advance in life. Promotions are coming to us by the grace and favor of God. Yes. We increase in strength, wisdom, and favor today. God is with us. God is for us. God is promoting us and making us a success. I release favor to come to us by favoring others. We show favor to others and we receive favor in return. Success and blessing cannot pass us by. We are blessed and successful and moving in God's favor. We are friendly, positive, and outgoing because the favor of life is our life. We believe and we receive the spirit of favor in our life in Jesus' name. God's favor puts us over and causes us to win. People open their hearts to us and purpose to do us only good. We project love and grace to everyone we come in contact with today. God brings us into favor and tender love with the people we meet and those we associate ourselves with like he did Daniel. We broadcast. Isn't that cool? We broadcast right. favor from our spirit to others. We always expect good things to happen, even in bad situations. We humble ourselves like a princess as we walk humbly before God. Or for some in the room, we humble ourselves like a prince as we humble ourselves before God. Discouragement and defeat are out of the question for us. We win. We prevail with favor. Because God is developing favor in our lives, limitless possibilities are opening up to us. There are no restrictions or limits on the success we have found favor in God's sight. We walk in God's love. We walk in God's blessing. And favor is ours because we are His. We are boundless. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our speaker today is very special, Sandra Hill. She's an ordained minister and a gifted teacher. She is an encourager. She serves on the board of Lighthouse Bear Light Bearers <laughs> Ministries with uh, Kevin Porter. She is the dean of the Holy Spirit Training <laughs> Intern Program. And she has a book. Is your book out? Is your book here? Not yet. Okay, her work is coming out, Stewardship of the Prophetic, and um, she's also founded the Academy of the Scribe to encourage and train those modern day scribes to express themselves. And more than that, she is a friend of a globe, and she is a friend of mine, and I'm blessed to have her here in Jesus' name. And I think Barbara, you're going to lead us into the throne, and then Sandra's going to come up. Just a little bit more worship since we ate. we got to go back into the spirit. <laughs> Praise
blows out of you into the nations, blows out of you into your families. His love flows out of you into the streets, out of you into the peoples, into everyone you meet. His love is love forever. His love is like a river. His love is like a river flowing. and to be among your people. Yeah. And I thank you for the deposit that you have for them this day. I thank you that it is the entrance of your word that brings light. So we thank you for the new um, just um, revelation or re revelation of who you are in us 
And I thank you, Lord, that you would illuminate yourself great to us this day. And we just love you and we honor you and just thank you for the love and the fellowship. And I thank you, Lord, that here in this place, all men will know that you are, are that we are your disciples because of the love that we have for one another. So we thank you and we bless you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want to thank God just for the opportunity to be here and to share with you today. I love a globe. And I, I love fellowship. Mm -hmm. That's really my heart. That um, really has been birthed in me since I was young. A young girl going to church and being and participating in church with my parents. It was always about the fellowship and the relationships that were built. And I believe that that's really one thing that a girl so wonderfully exemplifies. Because you get to take your time and fellowship and speak and, and know one another. And that's so important in God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. 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 The Lord um, has given me a word, and he really began dealing with me about um, the overall subject is the ability of God. And it really came to me um, last year around the elections because everyone was talking and every everybody was getting stirred up because we all have opinions and we all have um, think and our own beliefs. But I really asked the Lord, where is anyone that's really talking about what God's ability is to do? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who our elected officials are. But we, as his children, we have to rely on his ability. You know, we're still living day to day, and we're still going after his purposes and his plans. So I said, Lord, I really want to know who is really speaking about your ability. And my foundational scripture came from um, when the teaching about the children of Israel as they were transitioning from bondage into freedom and Moses sent out the spies to spy out the land and really their mandate was from God God was looking to see if they would see what he saw and where he wanted to take them and of course we know that only two came back with that good report there was two that said no we're able to do this our God is able to take us into this place and it's the report of Caleb that intrigued me the most. And in Numbers 13 and verse 30, it reads, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. And I asked myself, what did Caleb see in the ability of God that allowed them to press over everything that they saw, those um, the obstacles? which they made, the uh, other ten made greater than really the blessings that were there before them. And then also, they went through a process, and then 45 years later, once they entered into that land, Caleb's faith, his faith in the ability of God, it was still strong after 45 years. In Joshua 14, starting in verse 11, once they got there, Caleb said, As yet I am strong this day, as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakims were there, and the cities were great and fenced. If so, be the Lord with will be with me, then I sh shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, at the son of Junipeth, the Kinsite, unto this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. He really had a vision for God's ability. And I want to impart that to you today. And I want to say that today I want to focus on the fact that God has the ability to open gates. Mm -hmm. yes. He has the ability to open gates. And as this woman of God testified about not just one gate, but three gates, mm -hmm. three doors being open, that blessed me. Because that's where God, how God wants to keep our focus and our outlook of what God can do. 
So gates represent access. And I was thinking about now there's a lot of times when you go places, you need special security. So you, you have a card that you have to electronically let yourself in beyond a different boundary. And sometimes there's access that's only for you. There's only places that only you can go. Gates represent enlarged boundaries. And, I, and when I thought about that, I thought about if you've ever been to uh, one of our nation's nas national parks. Mm -hmm. You go through the gate, but once you get through the gate, there's a vast expanse of what you can enjoy in God's beauty and God's creation. Mm -hmm. So gates represent enlarged boundaries. Gates also represent starting points for new beginnings or new experiences. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And then gates can represent going from an old territory to a new territory. Mm -hmm. Now one of the things is interesting, God had dealt with me before, but he, the first thing about a gate to know is that wisdom lies at the gate. Mm -hmm. So no matter what gate, territory, uh, open door that God is taking us into, wisdom lies on the outskirts. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us to ask God for that wisdom for any new gates that we are going to and ask and no matter how much we know, we've experienced and we think we know, we need the wisdom for that particular assignment. Yeah. Because God is changing the circumstances behind the gate may be changed, so we need to ask again no matter how much we know. And God may have a new way of wisdom that he wants us to walk in. Proverbs verse eight, Proverbs chapter eight, starting in verse one. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the past. And here in verse three, wisdom, she cries at the gates at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, wisdom calls, and wisdom has a voice that is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and you fools be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. So wisdom is at the gate. Wisdom is at our place of access. Wisdom is where we're going to go into that enlarged territory. It's at the starting of new things. God's wisdom. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is skill in war. There's wisdom, and you know, sometimes when we're going into new places, we may have some warfare. But God's got a skill for that. There's wisdom in administration. And to me, administration is so key wherever you're going because if something is not, if the foundations aren't laid properly, it won't stand. It will not stand. So wisdom, there's wisdom in administration. There's shrewdness. shrewdness. And I, I define this as the best way to go. Because sometimes we can waste our time because we spend, we're spending our wills trying to figure out, you know, a, plan A, B, and C. But there's a shrewdness in wisdom. There's a best way that God has for us. Wisdom is also prudence in religious affairs. And it's wisdom in ethics and religion. And I believe as saints of God, we have to pull in wisdom in all areas. You know, sometimes you know, we can get very spiritual and only look at the spiritual part. But there's a wisdom in our administration, in our warfare, the best way to do things. So look to God to give you all types of wisdom and not just um, be caught in the religious box. The root word of wisdom is to make a proper judgment, to bring understanding through your processes of reaching a decision or drawing proper conclusions. Wisdom is the ability to make a judgment, the capacity to assess situations or circumstances shrewdly, and to draw sound conclusions. With the root word of wisdom is also the act of judging or assessing a person or situation or event. And we can't uh, go into everything blindly. 
we can ask God to show us what's behind the scene, what we, he may have us to encounter. And it says that wisdom cries. So wisdom is calling to each of us when it's time to go in these different gates. And also it has a loud voice. So we cannot claim ignorance. Mm -hmm. And that may be as simple as you feel something in your spirit. You feel a not right. And then so you have that's God's wisdom saying, okay, just take a step back for a moment. Talk to me. <coughs> see how I want to process this. See what I want to do. Wisdom comes, um, you can also think of wisdom as what aspect of God is speaking to you at that time. Is it, you know, Jehovah, Jairus, God, the wisdom of God trying to provide for you or trying to bring healing or trying to protect or trying to give you vision. That is what can be crying to you. The cry is also a, a proclamation. And, we, and I would say we can get that especially from the pulpit. If you sit, sit under a pastor, that is the proclamation of God coming to you in the form of wisdom. The, also, the cry is can be a summons, a call for, for help. The Holy Spirit is always trying to call us near for something. That is part of the wisdom of God. And then also, the, the cry can be for you to see further in the realm of the Spirit, what spirits you may be dealing with. God will, will cry those out to you. And then wisdom also brings understanding. That's where intelligent comes in. And another definition of understanding was to grasp the intention of something. And that's something I never thought of. And it, it blessed me a lot because um, in my church, I, I serve with the media team. And I, I, I have administrative gifts but I didn't really understand the intention of me connecting with him. But the, the long-term intention is because I teach scribal ministry at the Academy of the Scribe, media ministry is a part of scribal ministry. So now I'm getting more of the fullness that God's intent, you know, I went in just to serve, but now I'm seeing the intention of God. That's the wisdom of God, why he wants me there, and what some things he's going to unfold and train me in. So God will bring you that understanding, and sometimes it takes time. When you enter into the gate, go in with what you got. I just went in to serve. But then feel free to let God unfold his intentions. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want to share with you the parable of the gate called Beautiful. And I know we've heard it before, and I'm going to read the scripture and um, the Lord will expound up for us. In Acts 3, verses 1 through 10, starting in verse 1, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them entering into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I, as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which set for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to, to him. So I'm going to walk through this. And so it was uh, Peter and John, as was their custom, they were going to prayer, as they did daily, at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And as they were entering into the temple, there was a man who, since his birth, he did not have his legs properly developed. He couldn't walk. 
And I, I thought about how we see on the side of the freeway, you know, we see people that they're, they're crippled in some way. They have a sign and they need alms. That's our modern day version of this, right? And, um, and then we've been there in some form or fashion. There's something that we've needed and we've had to help hold up a sign you know, to the Lord and to others. Like, Lord, please help me. I am deficient. This man will ask for donations from the compassionate and the merciful people of God to support his life needs. This particular day, this young man was in for the change of his life. He encountered his true identity and his true life in God. And Peter said, I don't have any alms for you today. I have something way better, longer lasting, and life-giving for you. And this, and I believe that this put an expectation of hope in this young man. If you can just imagine him seeing something different because we're used to, you know, I'm sure he was used to people plopping down some money or some change, how we do today. But how many people really, you know, took time to give him the gospel or took time to give him encouragement. And so I want to say right here, wherever you are, don't give up hope. They extended the hope of God to him. And I was thinking of <laughs> the famous words of Jesse Jackson. He said, keep hope alive, right? Mm -hmm. And in the, from the Bible, hope is described in Psalm 31 and 24. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Psalm 34 and 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon him, upon them that hope in his mercy. Psalms 38 and 15. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope that I will hear, O Lord, my God. So the apostles had a gift that would be to the advantage of this young man allowing him to live and fulfill his life purpose. Because outside of this gate, he wasn't fulfilling his purpose. And I, I love to envision whenever there's a movie and you see a corridor of light, you know, you see doors of light. And really, that to me, those are doors of glory that God has for us and for our purpose, for us to walk in and to enter. And also to keep in mind the different doors and gates. There's different seasons. There's new doors. There's new gates. There's new opportunity for each of us. And nobody here, you know, we're not babies. Nobody in here is babies. We're been, <laughs> we've been in God for a minute. And we've had our life experiences. But God still has new gates. He has new doors. He has new seasons. He has new assignments. And be encouraged in that. So God still has purpose. And it's important to see yourself evolving. See yourself still being tweaked and molded by the Master. Amen. We all have something. We have several things that he wants to just develop in us. And it's a blessing. It's not something to be sorrowful about. But it's a good, you know, even as the woman of God was singing about God's love. That is God's love towards us. The fact that he still wants to, to mold us and make us and do new things to and through us. Amen. 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 So they then called his legs to life and commanded him to move forward in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who gives life. And I believe that as Peter took his right hand, there was an impartation of strength, right? That was used to be weak and unusable, became strong in his legs. And then honor came upon him too because before... There's really no honor being outside the gate. There, it just wasn't honorable. So God gave him an honor. And then he gave him dignity. I believe that the respect of who God is and what God did for him came upon his life. And you know, we see people and we hear and we have our own testimonies of what we were before. It wasn't honorable. But who we are now, people can look and see just by that light just by what God has done for us, just by the way we now act, mm -hmm. there comes a new respect and a new love comes upon us. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
that was the divine exchange, the divine impartation at that time. And he lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankles received strength. He stood up and walked into the gate called Beautiful, into the temple of the true and living God with great praise. So I want to ask you a question. What has you immobile? I want to take a say it all moment and you can think about that. What has you Im immobile? What's keeping you from your life's mission in this season? What's hindering your God assignments in this season? What lies has the enemy told in this season that you may believe in? Because God is continually moving us through the gates. We can say I'm too old. I don't have the finances. Nobody cares about what God has given me. I'm not that smart. I don't know how to start. I'm not skilled. I don't have friends. I don't have a support system. Or maybe you don't like the way you look or feel. But And the list can go on and on, and it's different for each of us. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to stay stuck because God has gates. We don't want to stay stuck in old death cycles and cycles that are unfruitful. Amen. That's very important. So at this season, God wants to shake off things that are unfruitful. And we have to know that it's okay to let some things go. And then that might be people. We have to let some people go. We might have to let some places go because you've been over here, but God says your blessing is over here. We got to learn to let go. So we have to follow that prompting of the Holy Spirit because he's speaking. There's no one in here that doesn't know his voice and we don't know how to pray and ask. But we have to be open to ask. Right? Because sometimes we'll ask for what we want, but not the things that we don't really want to do deal with. Or if we don't think that uh, God's answer is going to be our answer, we might not ask. <laughs> Been there, right? <laughs> Amen. So it's important. So, and then we all have people that put that band-aid on us. Say, oh, it's okay, and you can stay right here, and we love you, but no, that's not God. So understand that um, you know your giftings and your gifts will make room, but maybe it needs to be done in another place. I was thinking about um, the last fellowship I was in, and I was able to operate administratively. But there usually comes a time when I max out. There's nothing else I can do. <laughs> you know, I've done the same thing. You know, we've been doing this for the last five years. And there's nothing new to add to it. So I'm just thankful that God shifted me and my husband to a new fellowship. And then he's bringing in new skills. And like I said, so this time around I'm working with the media ministry. So that's a blessing because it's new and fresh. And I told God, I don't want to do that over there anymore. Like I'm done with that for now. So, and I would, you know, if he instructed me to. But there's new doors. It was a new door and a new gate. And I'm very, very thankful for it. And we know that the enemy does have an agenda to skill, steal, and destroy. But more important is, in the ability of God, is Jesus's, his agenda that he gave us. And that was to have life and abundant life, right? So um, Jesus wants us to seek his agenda for the abundant life. So not just life, because... We are so comfortable, and Americans, we're really comfortable, right? We have those, just the small things can be comfort that we take for granted can be a big blessing for someone else. And so we need to know that we, God wants us in the abundant life, and that's reflected in his standards, and that's in, reflected in his word. When Matthew 6 and 10, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So the standards of the kingdom and the abundant life, the king's dominion, are found in the Bible. There are standards for our attitudes. And I was reflecting, our attitudes always have a fruit attached to them. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. They always have a fruit. So is it a godly fruit or is it a not godly fruit? 
That's God's standards. And the abundance is that we have more of the godly fruit than the ungodly fruit. Wisdom. James 1 and 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that, that give it to all men liberally and abrade it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. When you ask, believe nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a, a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. There is a standard for love. And I want to emphasize the self-love and the self-care. Mark 12, 31. And the second is like, namely this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And for me personally, I'm working on the loving myself because very much you know, we can be givers and we can give out and give out and give out. But if we don't take time for ourselves, there comes nothing to give out. Yeah. Or what comes out is not very good, right? Very because you're spent. <laughs> so this is part of the abundant life, is to take care of ourselves. And, what, and God will direct us and, and to know that it's not selfish, but it's God's command. Joy. Psalms 35 and 9. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. There's a standard for abundance of peace. Romans 15 and 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. God has a standard for trials. Count it all joy. James 1 verses 2 and 3. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. This is the abundant life in God. And when you think about it, how privileged we are to know that, to have these truths, to, to live by. And do you ever say, how, I say, I don't know how people live without the Lord. Yeah. I say that. Because they, not, they don't have any anchor to hold on to like we do. Forgiveness. Mark 11, 25, and when you stand praying, forgive if you if you have ought against any, that your father would also, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. And I just want to note here that we may need to forgive God. There's things that happen in our lives and we're like, well, Lord, why did you let that happen to me? You know? So in this forgiveness, it's not it. It can go this way, but it can go this way as well. So just take take some inventory and see if God wants us to release Him from things that we have carried that it wasn't Him. But we can re, we can we can release that and then walk in greater abundance. Amen. And my last point about. Um, just living the abundant life is with our burdens. He said in Matthew eleven thirty four, 34, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And in Galatians 6 and 2, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So I'm asking God to really stir up our expectations in Him. Our expectations in His ability. Um, and I'm just thinking about as many times as this man was at the gate, something was different this time. So we can go back and take and, you know, try God again. Don't give up. Don't forget, give up on his ability to take you to a new place, new doors, new territory. Amen. That is his will. So ask God to stir up your expectation and ask him to encourage you in that. That's very important. Because the once you get inside the gate, you're going to take on his glory in a whole other way. It's going to be awesome. So God wants us no longer to be outside the gate. He wants us to go inside this gate, this open gate. And just, you can identify because outside the gate there's something lacking in our identity. So also in that encouragement and that expectation, think about what you perhaps used to do that you enjoyed. 
And even as children, there were things that we enjoyed doing we were allowed to do. They're still legal. It's still legal. It's still okay for us to enjoy, right? And have fun. So don't let, it, or and also walk in any giftings. If you were a writer, or if you were an artist, and that's my heart for scribal ministry, those, if God used you in that way, and you don't do those things anymore, pick them back up. Begin again. Let that be a new door for you. And in that, call those things to life. We have to continue to degree and to decree and thank you then for that declaration of favor. Whatever that next gate and door is, make your declarations over it. That's important. You have to say what God says and say it as you as He may give you it in your pen. But also, I believe it's great when you find Scripture. And I always say you. It's important for us to give some give God something to line up with. And that's what our decrees are. It's something that God can line up with. And if you have negative decrees, God's not coming to uh, connect with that. Mm -hmm. It has to be from the Word. And it has to line up with the Word. Amen? Amen. So our expectation is in Him, the one that gives life. And that's really what happened when they touched hands, when Peter said, rise up and walk. He had great expectation. And then also just keep in mind sometimes things are set aside perhaps because they were not God's agenda. You wanted to do something great, but God couldn't be found in it. So sometimes those things are set aside. But if you realign yourself with the Lord, He'll give you how to do it and how to give Him glory in it. Amen? Amen. And one of the things that's really beautiful is that once the man was inside the gate called Beautiful, he became a walking, leaping, and praising testimony. Yes, right? Amen. Walking, leaping, and praising. And God got all the glory because all the people witnessed his transformation. They witnessed this testimony. So as God takes us through new gates and new territories, we need to share. We need to share what God is doing. We need to share the expectation that we had, the new thing that he did. And and this is just a part of the obedience and we get when we walk through the gate. God will do a work in us and through us so that each person that's called into your purpose will be a witness to the glory of God. Acts 3 and 16 in this story it reads, And his name through, through faith, in his name, have made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which was which is by him have given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And he's basically saying, I, you've seen the witness of who God really is through this testimony. The young man had when he stretched out his hand to receive from Holy Spirit through the servanthood of Peter and John demonstrated great faith. Because of his faith, the impartation of strength caused this young man to be established before others with how God truly saw him. So that's another thing that happens once you go through the gates. You take on a, a, another portion of our identity in God. No person who saw him after this God encounter could deny who he was before as a layman outside the gate called beautiful and then who God had caused him to be as a praising man inside the gate called beautiful and inside the temple. He was healed and made whole. Amen. So God's authority was established, established through this young man's life. So now God can be recognized as a restorer, as a healer, as a deliverer, and as one who could change our everyday broken down situations. Amen? And I love that this says there was perfect soundness. So there was a perfection in what God did. And sometimes we settle, I think. And we don't know to ask for the bigger. But we settle for, okay, I just need a healing in my leg. But then something's wrong with my mind. Right? So perfect soundness is nothing is found lacking. And I love the word shalom. I believe this word has a has a 
parallel me meaning to the concept of perfect soundness. Shalom represents completeness, soundness, well-being, and a state of peace. And it's in reference to your spirit, your soul, and your body. Amen. And oftentimes we struggle in areas of our, ident our identity as we go into new season. We think God is only looking at the spirit man. Or he only cares about the physical. But no, God is a God of soundness. So that is spirit, soul, and body. So as you seek him, as you're going into these new territories, ask for it all. You know, Amen. let's ask for it all. Let's ask for a spirit, soul, and body. Because the more whole we are, then the deposit is greater to where we're going. You know, I don't want my leg to be healed, but then maybe my tongue needs healed. <laughs> right? And then you go over there, your legs are fine, but you're talking crazy. <laughs> that, that doesn't really give God the glory. So we need to ask for it all. That wholeness spirit soul and body and that's the god we serve there's a completeness we can ask for in him but we just got to ask for it mm -hmm. amen so i want to encourage you today that god he is the same yesterday today and forever his ability has not changed and we can just be a little more god focused in his ability he's the one who can open the gates for us in this season and I just want to encourage you because we are, this is a seasoned group of saints. Amen. There's new. There's new day, new, new gates. There's new portals. There's new doors. There's new connections. There's new assignments. Amen. There's new assignments. I have a, um, a friend. They're, um, they're mentors to me. And they're in their 80s. And they're in the world establishing Bible school. Wow. Wow. traveling with health with strength seeking God at that season so we never have to say our work is done or I am too old or I don't qualify you know the qualification is just in the surrender it's in the yes Lord it's in the Lord I'm, I'm willing to to be used and then also think about our use as um, it doesn't have to be the big bang I call it or to be behind the pulpit it can be with one person it could be with two people or it could be as you journey every day our everyday journey it's it's amazing how many people we really touch and we don't know so that is it can be a new assignment day by day and I just want to encourage you that because he's really calling us into the gate called beautiful Amen. 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 So I just want to release a prayer upon this um, this word, and then if you would like prayer afterward, um, I'm available to pray for whoever would like for him. But Father, we just thank you today. We thank you for the, the ability that you have to open the gates. And I thank you, Father, for everyone under the sound of my voice, that there are new gates, that there are new horizons, that there are new assignments, that there are new dimensions that you're taking each and every one of us into, Father. And I thank you that we have a surrendered heart to say yes to what you have for us. We are willing to go into the gate called beautiful and take our rightful place and stand in our rightful identity. And I thank you, Lord, that you will just heal each and every one of us as we go through this process of new doors and new gates, that we would be sanctified holy, even as Caleb was. It said he wholly followed the Lord, and I thank you that we will wholly follow you. And I ask that you would just give us your healing virtue, spirit, soul, and body. And I thank you as we go into our next dimensions and our next assignments that we are able to fully affect everyone who is attached to our purpose, Father. So just thank you, Lord. Let this word uh, germinate. Let it spring up and bear fruit a thousandfold. And I thank you for each and every one under the sound of my voice. And we thank you for your love and your goodness. And we thank you, uh, most importantly, for your ability. And we thank you and we bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Don't you have anything to say? I'd like to say something. She does.
I was, uh, unfortunately, also, I ate too much. When I eat too much, I can't stay awake. But, but I, was, I was impacted by the, the, you know, we hear a lot of messages. We hear what God is saying to us, but we don't always receive how to walk it out personally for ourselves. And our sister was so fluent in that, just taking us through one step at a time. This is how it works for you. Not just this is what you have to do. I appreciate that so much. But that sweetness in you gets it through too. Thank you. Amen. Oh, yeah. It's just a small point, um, a lesson that I learned, but how both what she said and what Lynn had shared came together. I had started a new job. This is a number of years ago. I had started a new job, and I was working for someone, and it, it was a new gate. It was a new door for me. And I, um, I, was, not, I was not doing well with my supervisor. And uh, he was giving me lousy assignments and then criticizing me because I wasn't producing with these lousy assignments. And I mentioned this to my pastor, and he said, have you prayed for God to let him see you with favor? Mm -hmm. I had never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. I had never thought of that before. And so I did. And, um, and before long, it all turned around, and I wound up getting an outstanding performance appraisal from him. So I just thought, you walk through a new door, and then if there's problems, ask for God to let them see you, find favor in their eyes. And uh, for me, the, both, both segments that you talked about just really came together today for me. Praise the Lord. Yeah. What a good Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if you guys have prayer, Sandra, we'll pray for you.